And finally, the last step of all of this before starting to learn and before breaking out your notebook, breaking out your computer and starting your week one or your week six or your week eight is asking ChatGPT this simple question. Ready? Hello, everybody. My name is Nayan. I'm the Black Female Engineer. I provide content for new and aspiring software engineers. And today we're going to be talking about ChatGPT, really the thing everybody and their mama has been talking about. But today we're really going to talk about how we can use ChatGPT to learn to code in pretty lightning speed. So let's get into it. So quick story time. In 2020, I went to a coding bootcamp for four months. It was a 16 week coding bootcamp and it cost an arm and a leg, literally over $15,000. Now, I do not know and I kind of already don't think I would have done that or at least been so quick to do that if ChatGPT had been a thing then as it is now. The reason for this is because I would have simply gone to chat.openai.com and asked, hey, I want to learn to code in four to six months. I have this amount of time I can devote to learning to code. What should my study plan be? What should my lesson plan be? What should I devote each day to learning? And then it would have said, well, well first, first do this, this then do this, then, then do this. this. And boom, I don't need to spend $15,000 to go to a coding bootcamp because I have an instructor and a guide right here. So it is now, it is not then. So really the best thing I can do now is simply show you all how I would have gone about that process and how you can save all that money, save all of that headache and become a software engineer in four to six months. I'll use the time frame of four months for this video because that's what my bootcamp was, but you can alter this to be whatever amount of time you want. So first things first, the way you would go about using ChatGPT to learn to code in four months and eventually get a job is first we need to figure out how we are going about studying, how many hours we are devoting per week towards this and how to break out those hours per day, per week, etc. If you've been wanting to learn to code, one of the questions you may be asking is, shoot, I, I am, am a, a full-time full -time worker. worker. I don't, I have, don't the have the time. time. Where do, Where I, do I, even I even put the put time, the time to, learn to, to learn to code? And just the confusion and worry of that all, the angst of that all, stopping you from learning to code in general. So let's get rid of that right now and ask ChatGPT how we should schedule our days in order to get our hours in. So I'm gonna get my laptop right here and straight up right now ask, how many hours per week should we put in for this goal? And boom, right there we see that it says 20 to 30 hours per week should be devoted to learning to code if your timeline is four months for getting everything you need to know to get a junior software engineer, junior full stack developer type role. So now we know we need 20 to 30 hours allocated towards coding per week. Where do we put this time? Let me ask ChatGPT. I'm gonna put in how many hours I work full-time or part-time and really any blockers to my time I may have. Me personally, I'm a 24 year old. I don't have dependents. I don't have really anything other than a full-time job stopping me from going towards this goal. So I'm gonna put that in and see what it says. And real quick, another thing that's important to me is having time to rest. I feel like I would just experience so much brain frying if I just went ham on this or just seven days a week, no rest days, no time off. And so I'm going to actually tell ChatGPT to let Sundays be a rest day and see what it says. So very clearly here, it says to devote two hours in the morning before work, three hours in the afternoon during lunch and two hours in the evening after work towards learning to code. This right here gives us, what, four and a half hours per day. And on top of that, learn to code on Saturdays for four to six hours. 
I love that Saturday isn't a full work day because it lets me do what I said before, still enjoy my weekend, still enjoy the opportunity to rest, to socialize X, Y, and Z. That allows us 26 and a half to 28 and a half hours of coding, of learning to code per week, which is just under that 30 hour threshold it had put as our max, which I think is pretty damn good. Okay, perfect. We know how many hours per week to devote to this. We know how to structure our week and our days to learn to code. So now let's ask ChatGPT what our week by week lesson plan should look like. I'm gonna simply ask, what should I spend each week learning? Please provide a 16 week breakdown. And here it is just pitting it all out for us. Weeks one to two, three to four, five to six, all the way and so on until week 16. So that's great. We have an outline of what we should focus on each week, what lessons, what types of concepts we should focus our energies on week by week. However, like I just said, it's really just an outline. And outlines are great, it helps us see direction, but when I don't know what I don't know, I'm gonna need more than just an outline. So I now, Week by week, I'm going to ask for a detailed breakdown of what I should be learning. Let's start out with that very first output, weeks one and two. ChatGPT said to focus on HTML and CSS basics along with finishing off the week with some JavaScript. Sounds great. Um, what basics? What basics are we talking about? So let me ask ChatGPT this specific question. What HTML and CSS concepts should I learn during weeks one and two? And with that question, it spits out all of the detailed lessons I should focus on for those weeks. Structure and syntax, elements and tags, attributes, semantic HTML, HTML forms, and that's just the HTML. Now for CSS, it says selectors, box models, styling properties, layout and positioning. So now I can reasonably feel like I have the true proper direction for week one of my learning. And then to really make sure we have everything solidified, we need some type of way to test what we've learned, test if what we have learned is enough to move forward. And so again, let's ask ChatGPT how we can test that. After learning HTML and CSS for one week, what is a good way to test my aptitude? And here it lists out a couple of different things you can do. The two I would love for you all to focus on are creating a basic site and replicating a basic site. Those are two very good ways of testing your skills and also refining your skills while, uh, while learning at the same time. Now, this is great, right? We know what we should learn, when we should learn it, and all that. But, okay, how are we going to learn it? We need some resources. So I'm going to ask, hey, what free resources do you recommend for me learning HTML and CSS? It spits out some recommendations. Some you have heard me talk about if you are not new to my channel. For example, Free Code Camp, I love. That's how I started learning specifically HTML and CSS. And some I haven't spoken about too much, but they're definitely worth your time. Definitely go through the list and see which resources you like the most, which ones work best for your learning style and which ones don't. And finally, the last step of all of this before starting to learn and before breaking out your notebook, breaking out your computer and starting your week one or your week six or your week eight is asking ChatGPT this simple question. Ready? If you were trying to teach me HTML for the very first time, what would you say? Now, of course, HTML can and should be replaced with whatever you'll be learning that week. But the reason this is so important is because it will provide you the proper um, basic understanding for why what you're learning is important, why you're learning what you're learning and what to expect in your lessons. When we're in week two and we're learning JavaScript, I would ask the same question. If you're trying to teach me JavaScript for the very first time, what would you say to me? That way I understand the importance of this concept, of this language, and use that to get me through my days and my weeks. Follow this formula for each week, each concept you are supposed to be learning. One, 
ask what specific concepts you should be learning for that week you are in. Remember with HTML and CSS, it gave us the very clear um, items that we should be checking off the list while we're learning. And that's how we know how far deep we're in. And we can use that to track our progress. Number two, ask how you can test your knowledge for what you've been learning. For the week one, we saw that by replicating a site or building a basic static site, that is a great way of testing our HTML and CSS knowledge. Three, ask what resources are best. Feel free to also include any other uh, things that would be important to you in a resource. Is it free? Is it low cost? Does it provide videos? Is it mostly reading based? Feel free to include any parameters you'd want ChatGPT to include in its answer. Then finally, ask. If you were trying to teach me X, for the very first time trying to teach me HTML, CSS, JavaScript, React, SQL, for the very first time, what would you say to me? Another way you can phrase this question is explain this concept so that a six-year-old could understand. Explain so-and-so so that somebody with no previous experience can understand. And then boom, you are very well on your way towards a career in software development, all thanks to ChatGPT. So there you go, everybody. I hope this was helpful. Please let me know what your thoughts are. What things are y'all trying to learn? Even if it's not coding related, if it is, if, if ChatGPT has already helped you in some way, please put it down in the comments because I would love to know. I'd love to get some new ideas of what things I can learn in the future. So thank you so much, y'all. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye, y'all. Oh, my God. This what is this? Ah. I'm being attacked. Three, two, one.